Thanks for tuning in to Retire Hour, the weekly show discussing income planning, investing, tax planning, estate planning, and Medicare. Complete retirement education. Hear from our financial advisors, CPA, estate planning attorney, and Medicare advisor every week. Welcome to Retire Hour. Welcome to Retire Hour. I'm Matt Goolsby. Thanks for tuning in this week to the show that helps you stay up to date on the ever-changing landscape that is retirement. How can not having all your one professionals or all your professionals under one roof cost you dearly? What kind of professionals am I talking about? Your tax advisor or tax preparer? Are they the same thing? Because they're really not. Estate planning attorney or estate planner, Medicare advisor, and then your financial advisor. If they're not all working together, I'd bet, I'd bet you a cup of coffee. It's going to be costing you something if it isn't already. As these tax laws change, as the landscape in retirement changes, as the economy changes, if you're not working with that complete team, don't let it catch you off guard. That's what we do here at Market Advisory Group, and that's what we talk about every week on Retire Hour. If you need help with this or if you have questions, feel free to reach out to us at 833-888-HOUR, or that's 833 888 Four six eight seven, or go to our website and you can submit your question right there. We love answering your listener questions on air. We get some every week. We appreciate that. We want to make sure we're again helping you avoid those costly mistakes. If you submit your physical mailing address, we'll mail you one of these Retire Hour coffee mugs out there to you guys. We appreciate that. Makes the show even better when you're drinking your favorite beverage out of your Retire Hour coffee mug. Just kidding. Can't guarantee that. So with me here in studio, I've got Danny Goolsby, an advisor with Market Advisory Group Wichita. Coming from his offices there, I've got Larry Clefcorn, an advisor with Market Advisory Group Wichita as well. And then Jonathan McCoy, an advisor with Market Advisory Group Kansas City. We work together as a team, but we also, like I said, have those tax advisors in-house with Market Tax Services, estate planning attorney Gerald Eidelman of Eidelman Law Firm, and then our Medicare department, Market Medicare Advisors. So guys, I met with a great couple this past week, Leo and his wife. They have a financial advisor. They have a tax preparer. They have an estate plan. They're nearing retirement and they inherited some real estate from his mom. Now they thought the real estate rules worked just like the IRA rollover rules. And they found out after it was too late, that it doesn't really work that way. And this, this past year, they, they sold some real estate and got into some other real estate. They also took $50,000 out of their IRA to buy into this new property and later sold the inherited property thinking they could just redeposit the money back in the IRA. Unfortunately, that's not the case. And I'm going to go to Larry Clefcorn here first. Larry, how could this have been handled here with us as far as working with this team approach? Well, I would walk down the hall and summon our CPA to come in the room and join us. Um, You know, sure, someone could Google it themselves and they come up with what they think might be the answer and depending on the source may or may not be accurate also no one understands tax law like an actual cpa I always think of it as you know this example of uh joshua saying hey I, I, i'm gonna look into this for you and i'll have an answer and i think of you know the the satellites up in the air are talking to each other as John as J- Joshua is going through and finding the correct information for someone. Um, you know it, it's vital that you have the resources and you have the the answers so you can make an informed decision. You may go ahead and do whatever it is you were planning to do, but at least you you did it with your eyes wide open and um it was an informed decision yeah and danny um when i was talking with them just again first first meeting with them hearing them walk through all these taxable implications some of them they're aware of some of them they weren't it was it it was unfortunate that they didn't have the team that they had because they had like i said the financial advisor they had someone that prepared their taxes for them every year they had an estate plan that's several years old i hear them walking through all these these things that they've done over the past 18 months ish. And it's unfortunate that those professionals were not collaborating together. And, uh, you know, Larry was just saying, we, we, we work with the tax department in house here. That's, that's an advantage because oftentimes you don't know that something's going to cost you money until you go to file your taxes. 
in tax time, and then you can't do anything about it. Well, and, and a lot of times I'll say it this way, is some of the things that you believe to be true about money actually turn out to be untrue, when would you want to find that out? And so, yes, we work hand in hand with Joshua Sakura. And, the, and an interesting point that I would make is that uh, just because you might know some of the tax laws, whether that's as a, as a normal everyday American or whether you might be a CPA, we have lots of clients as CPAs that say, I don't trust myself, I'm a CPA, but I don't trust myself to know this part of the tax code. And so, again, it's, it's just uh, amazing how much the, the tax code fragments. Yeah, and then, again, if you're not staying up to date on it, because I think some of those CPAs that we have actually, even as clients, their background isn't tax. And you can have a lot of different CPAs that have a lot of different backgrounds. Specialties. But yeah, and our, our CPAs do have that background in tax. And that way, yes, Joshua is our lead CPA, and he comes on the show and talks about this stuff. But we have more than just Joshua. Oh, I mean, the tax department's made up of 16 people, 16, 17 people, I think, now. And as we're getting ready to go into tax season, what we're doing right now, people – People will often talk with Joshua and say, well, this has got to be your downtime. No, this is one of our even busier times of the year with Roth conversions. We're doing tax planning for next year. And yeah. and, and that's a resource that a lot of financial advisors don't have. Yeah, they, uh, Joshua will, will li- love to take the fourth quarter of the year instead of taking that off like a lot of tax preparers will do. But that's actually where he shines the most because he can actually bring in not just the Roth conversions. There's a lot of tools he has in his tool bag. Yeah, and actually with this couple too, we're, they're coming back here next week. Uh, they're, they're looking forward to that because they realize all the missteps they've done with this this past year, and they're like, okay, this enough's enough. Mm-hmm. Um, and we, and they like here's the th- here's the unfortunate thing, they like their tax repair, they like their current financial advisor, but they understand that they've got to take care of themselves, and they've got to they've got to get a better plan together. Jonathan McCoy, there, you know, another thing when I was walking through with them is um, when I, we were having this conversation, we discovered that they're going to be triggering Irma stands for income related monthly adjustment amount. When I teach the tax class, I'll go over Irma and talk about those future RMDs and how they're probably going to be costing people more for their Medicare premiums. I, I view it as almost a failure of our industry to not be talking with people about these extra pitfalls that could cost them two years in the future, or maybe even sooner if they've triggered it. Do you find that that's something people very, really have a great understanding about? Yeah, absolutely. And you bring it up. I mean, you said it perfectly with the last couple of eventually enough is enough, right? How many tripwires do you want to continue triggering and and avoid blowing up your entire retirement plan by making just a few wrong turns or or wrong decisions? You know, I find that in talking with our our lead CPA in Kansas City, uh, Pat Doherty, our CPAs here are almost becoming more and more health insurance professionals and not, not professionals, but experts because our health insurance programs are becoming more and more wrapped into the tax code. And we talk so much here on the show, especially about the connection between your financial and investment management with tax related issues. But those tax related issues are also starting to have more and more to do with what sort of health insurance you're on, whether it's Medicare or especially the Affordable Care Act, understanding the income restrictions. If you've decided to retire before you're 65, before you're Medicare eligible and have to go on some sort of Affordable Care Act or or subsidized health insurance, If you lose those subsidies because you pull one dollar too much out of your retirement account in a given year and that ends up costing you five to ten plus thousand dollars potentially in in back payable uh, subsidy payments that you should not have received in the first place when do you want to know that you're going to be triggering those tripwires and you use the perfect example with those clients the folks that you're talking to these days is they understand that mistakes have been made mistakes can continue to be made without the correct direction and leadership and, and ultimately from our perspective, without the leadership of the right team. It's not just your financial advisor. It's not just your CPA doing your tax return. It's not just your uh, your Medicare advisor, or your Medicare or health insurance professional. All of these people working together under the same roof and oftentimes in the same conference room, making these decisions so that one person can chime up and say, hey, you've got to start thinking about this over here on the tax side, this over here on the health insurance side. It's, it's invaluable in those conversations we're having with folks. And They're, just to add to that, I mean, if people are working with a financial advisor, oftentimes they're getting more value here working with us as a team because we're not charging them anything extra to have access to all those other departments. And that's the unfortunate thing. Some people will say, well, but what's that going to cost me? And when we go through a portfolio analysis, we show them what they're being charged right now. And if it's not comparable, sometimes it's even less and they're getting more here for it. So if you want to have a conversation with us, feel free to reach out at 833-888-HOUR or that's 833-888-4687 
or go to our website, retirehour.com. You can check out past episodes, but you can also submit your question there or book a consultation right there on the website to meet with us in any of our offices, whether that's Wichita, Topeka, Kansas City, Missouri, Independence, Missouri, or Prairie Village, Kansas. Well, stay tuned because we'll be right back talking about another story about how someone almost missed out on six months of their Social Security payments. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Retire Hour. I'm Matt Goolsby. This week, we're talking about things that can cost you thousands of dollars or hurt you in your retirement plan, specifically, too, if you're not working with all those financial professionals under one roof as a collaborative team. This next story I'm going to talk about is Pat. Pat came to one of my Social Security classes that I'll teach around the metro quite often. If you ever want to come to any of our classes, let us know. We teach many different topics here around the metro, wanting to help you guys get the education you need. But Pat had questions about Social Security. He had a financial advisor, had a tax professional too, and he had had an estate plan drafted up, but none of those professionals were working together and helping one another collaborate on the plan. Specifically with his social security checks, or I say checks, his benefits, he had not quite filed yet. And he was meeting with me saying, uh, you know, his he's spending a little bit more than he should, drawing down on the nest egg. So they looked at maybe selling the house to maybe help boost because they've gotten quite a bit of equity in the house. Problem is they needed to fix it up. Mm -hmm. And he was being faced with, do I take money out of my retirement accounts? Obviously that causes taxes. We talked about that with one of our tax professionals, but there was another option that was available to him. Since he was about a year past his full retirement age, he could backdate his social security payments to receive up to a six month lump sum of back payments. And his, his advisor, his, his broker couldn't help him with that. In fact, his broker's answer was just go talk to social security. And Pat's like, I've called them. I'm on hold forever. I, I figured I could learn something at your class. And he didn't learn that in the class, but he learned that coming in and having a conversation with us. And Jonathan, I'm going to go to you because you teach a lot of these social security classes too in the Kansas City area. Pat attended this social security class and, and this broker couldn't help him. That's not uncommon, is it? That these financial advisors out there that, are, that maybe people are working with, their answer is go talk to social security. Exactly. And it's not uncommon at all. And Pat's the perfect example of a lot of the folks that come in and talk to us one on one. It may just be as simple as, you know, three or four or even 10 unanswered questions you may have with Social Security, whether you've been, you know, divorced, married, remarried, uh, widowed, never been married, and you're going to be filing single on your own benefits. I mean, the other plenty of uh, options for filing. And we're more than happy to educate people, whether it's at one of our classes uh, or in person. I mean, I always find those conversations are more beneficial one on one. But I really think that from behind the scenes, looking at how our industry operates, most financial advisors are more worried about where they're going to put your money. They're not so much worried about giving you advice on the things that they're not going to be compensated for, like Social Security. You know, Social Security is not going to send anyone a commission check for helping you make the right decision on your Social Security benefits. And when that financial incentive is not there for a financial advisor, most of the time those issues are not going to be brought up. It's, just, it's no uh, different than a lot of the tax advice that we're meeting with people on uh, that they're missing because their financial advisor is not licensed or certified to give that tax advice. That's why we've got those professionals in house here. Um, so it, it is a very common story. And it's, a, I would say, if not the majority, a very large percentage of the people that come and talk to us one on one, it's because their advisors are not bringing these things up and being proactive about things, especially like Social Security. Well put there. The financial advisors are more concerned about maybe doing things with the person's money than they are with other things that impact them and it's just as equally important in their retirement planning. And Danny, this is something we see, we could talk about scenarios like this over and over again, but so many times people are overpaying for incomplete advice. And what I mean by that is they're not getting the tax advice, the estate planning advice, the income planning advice. But Jonathan said the advisor's more concerned with the investments because that's what's in it for them. What an indictment, what an indictment of our industry. Yes, that's right. Um, and it, we run into people all the time that say, I'm going to wait till this age or i'm going to wait till that age so a lot of people say i know how to get the most out of social security i'm just going to wait till 70. and so uh they're going to need funds in during the meantime if they're if they're no longer employed they're going to need funds to keep the lights on at home and pay the grocery bill and things like that and they're just going to pull those those funds from their nest egg while they wait for social security to to uh, ramp up eight percent per year that's that's how social security works until it maxes out at age 70. 
well, that may be how to maximize, but that's certainly not necessarily how to optimize. And so I, we have a lot of fun. Joshua and I will sit down with, with someone in, in the conference room, and actually you can almost see it was, it's almost like a laboratory because we're, we're figuring out the perfect mix for that particular client. And a lot of times people will, will try to take Social Security and take it at the wrong time and create uh, taxes on their Social Security that they don't necessarily have to pay. So there's lots of options out there. Or don't even factor in if specifically married couples, I see it all the time, they don't factor in longevity there. And that's an important thing to consider when you're looking at when to take it. So Larry Clefcorn, I'm going to go to you. Of course, I'd be remiss if I didn't have one of uh, our CPAs come in there and talk with Pat about the implications of getting this lump sum payment all at once here. And uh, it's always important to walk through these what ifs, these tax scenarios before someone does it, because after they've done it, you, it's very hard to unwind if if at all even possible and you have to know this like joshua says you have to know what the implications are because the tax genie is very hard to put back in the bottle right that is right and understand please we're not trying to talk you into doing a, something a certain way we're not trying to talk you out of doing something a certain way we're just trying to inform you equip you with the tools necessary and know where the landmines are. Um, th this is something that I, I just can't emphasize enough. Um, and, and another thing that is important is making sure that we're not missing, missing something that is simmering under the surface. And so oftentimes, Joshua will start by finding out what has the last year or two looked like for you financially and how's that, how has that affected the taxes? And it's always helpful for looking at tax planning going forward there. Well, stay tuned because we'll be right back with our weekly segment of Find the Fees and talking about loaded funds. Stay tuned. back to retire hour in this week's segment of find the fees i thought it was important to refresh what's called a loaded fund and find the fees it's time to find the fees so danny what is a loaded fund so d just to be distinct or, or succinct um, i went to investopedia and this is their definition it says a load fund is a mutual fund that comes with a sales charge or commission and the load is either paid up front at the time of the purchase, or that would be a front end load, or when the shares are sold, that would be a back end load. And as long or as long as the investor holds the funds, that would be a continuous level or level load. Yeah. And Jonathan, I met with someone this past week. He met with his former advisor, uh, actually his former advisor retired and a new guy took over and that happens a lot and unfortunate because you want to have that continuous uh, advisor in retirement. But Preston, he's concerned about the economy later this year, and he's going into some newer funds. And I asked Preston, did you have a conversation with your advisor, your new advisor, to talk about how if you go into these funds and they have these front loads, it can then kind of tie your hands somewhat because if you jump back out of them at the end of the year, you have to weigh that, well, I just pay these front, upfront fees. And and that, that could be a pretty big drag on someone's portfolio, can it? Yeah, absolutely can. And not just from a portfolio turnover standpoint. So if your advisor is using loaded funds with an actively managed style of portfolio, those front end and back end loaded funds, uh, like Danny was just describing, they will eat away and, and completely erode your potential for any sort of return. So ultimately, advisors that are working on a commission structure like that, um, their hands are tied as well. And a lot of the big brokerage houses and custodians are telling brokers and advisors, hey, if you're going to use these loaded funds, you cannot be very active with how you're managing your client's accounts. Essentially, once you get them into this investment, you need to hold them there for two to four to five years and sometimes even longer to help spread that cost out over a long period of time. So in, in Preston's circumstance, I would be more concerned about what kind of conversations are you having around having a proactive strategy through a crisis so that you know if you put yourself in the position where you've got to call your advisor to determine what that strategy is going to be after the crisis has already begun, you know, you're, you've already stepped in the mud and, or stepped in the quicksand in this case, and, and you're going to be fighting to get your way out of it, especially if your advisor is using loaded funds like this, where, you know, their hands are tied from the, the corporate infrastructure that's telling them, no, you're not allowed to change this client's account because you just sold them this whole list of, of commission funds. 
most advisors are not going to be working for for free and are not going to have much incentive to get you out of harm's way. Um, that's why we find it's important to put those proactive strategies in place ahead of time. Yeah, and Preston, when he and I were talking about this, uh, he was actually, I don't want to say he was bragging, but he was proud of the fact that the amount of money he had there, he actually was going to be getting a discount on some of these loaded funds. And and when we still walked through some of the math, it worked out where we were going to be a, a more affordable option for him, specifically because of him wanting to make changes, but also because he wasn't getting the tax advice, estate planning advice, and help with his Medicare as well. And it just, he was, he was missing so much and he was overpaying for that incomplete advice there. So Larry Clefcorn, how do we manage money and how do we assess our fees? Okay. So our fees, uh, think of it, think of it this way. Um, you have the option with most of your utilities that if you don't want to pay the, the month by month usage, you can use an average and they'll set it up. So it's an average and, and you know, that's what it's going to be every month. And well, that's the way I like to compare to explain how we work. We are fee-based advisors. Um, and the fee is not determined uh, by some nebulous way. It's actually determined by what instruments we need to use, what investments uh, that should be used to accomplish what you're trying to accomplish. That's why we may take a couple of meetings to just find out what is the right fit for you. So that's how we approach it. The other thing is that I like to, fo- I like to uh, emphasize to people, focus on the account balance. That's the most important thing, the account balance. The average rate of return tells you something, but it doesn't tell the whole story. Yeah, and our maximum fee is 1.5%, and our minimum fee is half a percent. Oftentimes, it's closer to 1%, but that's going to depend on the size of your portfolio and again, what tools we go out and use to build you a custom plan. So if you want to have that conversation, feel free to reach out to us at 833-888-HOUR, or that's 833-888-4687. We'd love to sit down with you in any of our offices, Kansas City, Missouri, Independence, Missouri, Prairie Village, Kansas, Topeka, Kansas, or Wichita, Kansas, and have that complimentary consultation with you just to see if you're missing anything in your retirement plan, specifically with taxes, estate planning, Medicare advice, and income and investment advice all under one roof, working together as a team. We'll stay tuned because we'll be right back after this break with a great question for our Medicare advisor, Bill Vodder. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Retire Hour. I'm Matt Goolsby. Thanks for tuning in this week. Since we're in open enrollment season, we're talking here with Medicare advisor Bill Vodder. It's important to review those things. We talked about that last week on the show about reviewing your prescription drug plans. But you had a conversation with a couple this week that they were still working. They were still on their company-sponsored health plans, but they had both reached the age 65 or older. And most health plans, company health plans, don't require you to go off that, right? Right. Right. And so you were going to walk them through, was it maybe in their benefit to switch to Medicare and stop being on their company plans? I'm sure some people think, well, my company plan's got to be better because anything that involves the government, you know, I I just would rather probably go with private enterprises. (laughs) I've, I've heard people say that. I mean, but really you guys do a great job at Market Medicare Advisors of walking people through the pros and cons, specifically to what it's going to cost them, right? Right. And so how do you walk them through that? Well, I always encourage people if, if they have if they if they have both available, well then weigh it out. Weigh out the cost and benefits of Medicare against the cost and benefits of their group insurance. In some cases, they're better off just to hang on to the group and keep riding it for a while. In other cases, they're better off to let go of the group and take Medicare. And and that includes full time employees. In this particular instance, I had a gentleman in yesterday who is actually quali- qualifying for Medicare due to an early disability. Um, he received his Medicare card, and it's going to go into effect in February. And so he and he had attended one of our workshops and was aware of the fact that it was something that he should do. It was evaluated, so he came in to talk to me. And here's kind of the scenario on him: his wife is continuing to work. Um, it's costing them $202 a month to carry him 
on her group insurance. So that's that's actually more than what Medicare Part B is this year, right? It is. Yeah, Medicare Part B currently is one hundred and forty eight fifty. Now, to add to this, on his group insurance, anytime he goes to see his family doctor, he pays a thirty five dollar copay each time he walks in the door. Now, then there's the major medical part of his group insurance. For, so for major expenses, he has to cover 50% of the cost of the next, of the first 2500 and then he has to cover 20% of the cost on up to about on up to $5,000 of total cost. And so, you know, he's out half the 2500, he's out 20% of the 5000. So so he's out a couple couple thousand dollars there to do that plus the 202 a month well he could as an example go on a medicare advantage plan currently there's one available that has a a three thousand nine hundred dollar maximum exposure to him so and his co-payments to see his family doctor is zero so he could go see his family doctor all he wanted and it wouldn't cost him anything um and then on top of that if he wanted to go see a specialist on this one particular plan, the copays happen to be twenty five dollars this this year and next. But on some of the other plans, they could be thirty or thirty five or forty dollars. Uh, but he, but there's none of this fifty percent to twenty five hundred or twenty percent to five thousand. There's none of that in there. And then the the we evaluated his prescription drugs. We took that into account. He could get better coverage through Medicare. Than he would have through his group and through the her his wife's group insurance. So you walked him through these dollar amounts. I mean, when it, when most people are walking through, whether it's buying a car, going to dinner, even going to the grocery store, we want to know what it's going to cost us out of our yeah, pocket. Yeah, what's the bottom line here? I mean, there's some upfront costs, some back end costs, but when the dust settles at the end of the year, which one of these did I come out the better on? Did he have anything going on health wise where he was actively, you know, needing to go to the doctor and do a lot of stuff? Um, he sees, yeah. I mean, he has a, a pacemaker and so he does see a heart doctor, I think just once a year, but you know, so he sees doctors, I would say probably three or four times a year. I mean, unless something comes up. Right. And I mean, pacemaker, that's kind of a big thing, but I mean, hopefully he doesn't need to mess with that for a long time, but so when you're walking him through this, which way did he go? I mean, did he? Well, he's, his wife couldn't come in with him, so he's going to go home and weigh this out with her. I also walked him through traditional Medicare. So you, with traditional Medicare, you would have the 148 a month plus the cost of a Medicare supplement and a standalone prescription drug plan. In this particular scenario, he would have ended up spending more money, but he would have had Beyond that, his out-of-pocket expenses probably would have been less than staying on the group insurance. So looking at those two scenarios, traditional Medicare versus Medicare Advantage. And the group insurance. And the group insurance, correct. Three three options. He could go three different ways there. Is this something that he has to do right now because of Medicare open enrollment season, or he can kind of choose whenever he wants to do that? No, he's not He's not affected by the Medicare open enrollment season. This is His Medicare will go into effect on February 1st. Okay. And so I, he didn't really need to see me today but or you know this at this time, but, but he had been to one of our workshops and knew that he should evaluate this and came in to talk. Well, I find that with Medicare, when you're doing your classes, people, people are trying to get this information. I say people it seems like the majority of people are trying to get the information, the education up front. But then sometimes you run across people like I turned 65 today. I need, I need something right yes. now. And then that, that, so at least people are trying to get that information in advance because that's the time to do it. Right. Right. Yeah. Preferably don't wait until the last minute, but at the same time, sometimes I have people come in a year early and that's maybe a little bit too early because some of these plans get tweaked and adjusted from year to year. And so to come in a year early, I can't really give them a accurate accurate picture of what it will be like for them when they go on Medicare. But you guys do such a great job there and and you and Corey and your team helping people figure out the pros and cons of going like you say left or right or even with their group plan staying on that and and you know you you and I have talked about in the past uh specifically uh, with someone I know um they the federal government has their own kind of uh, Medicare supplements, right? That they can go with, but there's some different options out there even for that, right? Oh, referring to retired federal employees. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. There's, 
there's a there's several actually different retire different insurance programs for federal employees and, and even those you sometimes need to weigh them out as to which one is the best one to use if you're going to use them at all and you guys again you got i commend you you guys do a great job with that so if you guys need help during this medicare open enrollment season reviewing your drug plan or anything like that feel free to reach out to us at 833-888-HOUR or that's 833-888-4687 or go right to retirehour.com and if you have a question on Medicare, submit that question there. It will use it on air. And if you give us your physical address, like I've mentioned before, we'll send you one of these Retire Hour coffee mugs. We'll stay tuned because we'll be right back after this break with our estate planning attorney, Gerald Eidelman, with our estate planning segment. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Retire Hour. Continuing this theme here of what could cost you lots of money in retirement, I met a couple the other day. They had questions over some of their investments, and they also took out their estate plan while we were just having a conversation here in our offices. And over the course of chatting with them, they said they had crafted a trust with an attorney several years ago. So they had some questions there. So I called our estate planning attorney to come into conference too with us. And Gerald Eidelman, you came down there and you and I were looking at it and through the course of that hour, we were talking, we I found out from the financial advisor standpoint, none of their accounts had beneficiaries listed as the trust. Right. You found out that none of their assets elsewhere had been titled to the trust. So ultimately boils down to what were they, what were they doing? What was the purpose here? So, and we, that's not uncommon, right? No, unfortunately, you know, I, I was called the, it might be an appropriate term, but it's, trust mills. There's lots of groups that, you know, promote doing trust. They have a lawyer who may produce the trust, but it's not going to be your neighborhood lawyer. It's going to be a lawyer, like, say, for example, if you're in Wichita, it's in Kansas City. So you don't have a direct connection. And you wind up with a pay, a, just a bunch of documents that you sign. And a trust it will not work for you if it's not properly funded. Or, or if there's a, a beneficiary set up to go to the trust, right? Right, right. Yeah, because I mean, you can't you can't move. Well, you can. You wouldn't want to probably move your IRA into a trust. No, that would alive. be that would be a taxable event, and you don't want to do that. Right. But but in general, you can you know you can designate a trust as a beneficiary of an IRA uh, or a retirement account. Uh, you have to be careful how you do it, and it requires special trust and other things like that. But that's possible. But if you have a home and you haven't transferred to the trust, the trust can't distribute it later after you die. They literally, what you have to do is you'll back up to your will, wind up in probate court to eventually transfer it into your trust to then distribute it from your trust. Which really undermines the whole reason Endeavor, yes. for a trust. Absolutely, yes. Except for the fact that an attorney made thousands of dollars off someone a long time ago <laughs> right. and didn't fulfill the rest of the obligation of helping them structure it where it's going to wind up okay. Or maybe the fact the attorney wasn't involved with a financial advisor to help partner and change those beneficiaries. Right, right. And that's a big deal. I mean, I, I think, you know, as an attorney, there's certain limitations that you can do. I can transfer a real estate, a piece of real estate, no problem. I can't go to your uh, financial advisor and tell them to do X. But if I have a relationship with a financial advisor, I can let him know that this is what needs to be going on and then can work with the client to make sure that those steps and those beneficiaries are included. Well, yeah, I saw you the other day. You walked down the hall to Stephanie and Scott and you said, hey, uh, so-and-so just completed their trust. Um, here's the signed updated beneficiary forms. We need to make sure we process all this to where maybe their spouse is the first uh, primary beneficiary right. and then so, the trust is the contingent or the backup beneficiary. Right. right. And I, I, you and I could go on and on the whole show about how many times we've seen people that think they have these estate plans that do, you know, we stress so much, you have to do this in advance. Right. You have to have planning. And people think they've had they it. They had it, right. And it's out of sight, out of mind. Yes. But if, it's, if accounts move, names change, things happen, you encourage those estate plans to be reviewed every four or five years. Yeah, I mean, you know, you, you should... Yeah, because it, it, that's exactly what happens. You buy a new home, you forget to put it in the name of the trust. Now all of a sudden, it's outside the trust, 
and then you're right back in probate court where you don't, which is what the trust is trying to avoid in the first place. Uh, I mean, that's not the only reason to set up a trust, but that's one of the big reasons. And most people set it up for that particular reason. So you don't want to shoot yourself in the foot by not being diligent and working to make sure that your assets are properly designated to wind up in your trust or have been transferred to your trust so while you're alive. There are certain assets, like you said, can be transferred in to the mm -hmm. trust while you're alive. What would maybe some of those assets be? Well, I mean, some people, what they do is they have, if they have bank accounts, they open up a trust uh, a bank account in the name of the trust and then use that as their primary checking. And they put all their, ass, all their savings and checkings under the name of the trust. So that's one way you can do it. Obviously, transferring the house, titling vehicles in the name of the trust, these are all ways of transferring property to the trust uh, that will make that that are currently made rather than until after you died. So there's things you can do right now, or that you need to do right now. It should be more uh, specific. Specific <laughs> that will make your trust. Uh, useful and, and fulfill its purpose. Maybe investment accounts that are not in uh, your retirement accounts. Brokerage accounts, exactly. I mean, you can transfer those into the name of the trust. Uh, there may or may not be tax consequences if this has to be a sell-off in one of the accounts. You know what would be beneficial? If while you're making that estate plan, if the financial advisor had also a tax professional or tax department Absolutely, that you can meet yeah. with and have that conversation there. All that's right. Once. And that's what we do often is the whole point is to be able to have all of the thinking heads at the same table so that we can provide the best advice possible. Um, next time I get sideways with Joshua, I'm going to call him a thinking head. <laughs> that's a good name, a thinking head. It's those team members that we work together here that's as a right. team to make sure our clients and the people we help aren't getting these unexpected surprises when things right. happen. I mean, you've seen it where uh, things haven't been properly titled for estates and it's gone terribly wrong, right? Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, it, it, what you wind up doing is you wind up spending your time in court paying attorney fees, it, you know, and for something that would have costed you a couple hundred dollars to transfer while you were alive. So, I mean, you leave this mess to your children and then they have to go and gather all this assets, throw it into the trust, go through probate. It's a it's an expensive and it's a time consuming process. I mean, we talked about like three weeks ago. Uh, you either pay the expense now, or you pass that expense and burden onto the. That's next right. Generation. That's exactly right. And paying it now is usually much cheaper than paying it later. And then, not to mention, if you think you've already had it done. Probably a good idea to have that reviewed every four or five years. Yes. I mean, laws change, circumstances change that you may not be thinking are relevant to making changes to your estate plan. So it's always helpful to review your plan every four to five years. Uh, you know, I do reviews for free. And so I encourage people to bring their documents, let me review them, and then give them my opinion as to where they need to make any changes. And you and I teach those classes together in the Metro. And if you guys want to have that conversation or come to one of the classes, let us know, 833-888-HOUR, or that's 833-888-4687, or go to our website, retirehour.com, and submit your question there, or book an appointment right there on the website. And again, if you submit your question, we'll possibly use it on air. And then also, if you give us your physical mailing address, we'd love to send you one of these Retire Hour coffee mugs as well. So submit those questions online. We'll use it on air. Well, stay tuned because we'll be right back with Joshua Sakura, our lead CPA at Market Tax Services, talking about, you know, if you have a financial advisor that you've been working with over the phone at some company, why you might can't get tax advice from them. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Retire Hour. I'm Matt Goolsby. Continuing this week's theme of what could cost you money and cost you maybe thousands of dollars or, or cost you dearly in retirement are here on this tax segment, Joshua Sikora to talk to us about Roth conversions. Uh, a guy came up to me after a, a class this week I was teaching and he says his own account out there, I'm not going to name where it was. He called up and, and talked to them before he did a Roth conversion on his own. And uh, 
he asked them several questions and they said, yep, no problem. Not going to hurt him, whatever, whatever. Well, come a year and a half later, he found out he was having to pay more for his Medicare premiums. He'd triggered that Irma. And, uh, you know, if you look at people's brokerage statements, there's often a paragraph down there that wherever the money is, cannot give legal or tax advice, consult with your legal or tax professional. And you do such a great job. And since we're in this Roth conversion season of the fourth mm-hmm. quarter here, sure. you do a great job of walking people through the pros and cons of how this could impact the taxation on their social security, how this could impact what capital gains rates they're paying. Mm-hmm. Irma, like I mentioned, income related monthly adjustment, out, what they'll pay for their Medicare premiums in a couple of years. And now all this stuff is, is tied together and can impact one another. Why is it so important if you plan or are interested in, in, in a Roth conversion to work with this tax advisor to see the multiple items all there that can overlap and, and cause more out of someone's pocket? Yeah, yeah, that's a great question. So on a fundamental level, doing a Roth conversion is a transaction inside your retirement account, right? So that's why you go to your financial or retirement advisor and, and they're the ones who actually execute on that. However, going from traditional to Roth IRAs, That's all talking about tax status. So in essence, what you're doing is asking your retirement or financial advisor to do something when they can't even tell you the rules about what they're doing. So uh, a financial advisor is kind of hamstrung on being able to tell you how this all works and why it all works, but they're the ones who have to do it, which is great that you and I get to work together on it because I'm the one who talks to people about the rules for what's going on. And then you're the one who's actually doing it and we're all there. We're doing it basically hand in hand with the client. Well, it works best when um, we're aware of everything that they have going on. Well, that's the truth. You, you and I have found too often uh, where if maybe someone is just coming in and engaging, just you as a tax advisor, or maybe they're working some with me and some with you, but not all, all with us mm-hmm. that, oops, I left that out. And then they're upset that something costs them money, but you know, we can only give advice and guidance on what they're letting us know about. Right. That's right. That's right. We can only work with the, the, the data you give us. And just like on the other way around, we bring data to the table that the client doesn't have. You talked about the Medicare premiums. That's something that the, the client usually doesn't know about unless they've sat through the conversation with us before that what we're doing today is going to have consequences down the road. It's important that you know about those consequences because you may decide to take those on. I can't decide that for you though. I have to tell you that that's, that's a potential or it's going to happen. And then it's up to you to decide if it's worth it. Sometimes people decide it is some people, sometimes people decide it isn't, but again, they can't make that decision unless I tell them about it. When we're in this Roth conversion season and most people are like, well, why is there a Roth conversion season? We want to talk to a little bit about that. Yeah. Yeah. We like to do, we like to talk about tax planning in general, Frequently, it's about it comes down to Roth conversions in the fourth quarter of the year. We like to do that for a couple of reasons. One, you have a fair idea of what your income is going to look like, or you will after we we can talk through it. Uh, that's important because any tax planning we do stands on top of your other income. So the so- more solid we can get that foundation of what your income is going to look like, the more trustworthy whatever tax planning structure we build on top of it. Whether that's Roth conversions, whether that's some of our other tools at our disposal. Um, that that's piece one piece two is that we usually have a better idea of what tax law is going to look like. Um, it seems like as we, the years progress that gets shakier and shakier. Um, I mean, we're still right now waiting for movement on some tax bills that are in front of Congress and when those will get anywhere, if they're going to get anywhere is anybody's guess. And if they don't get them passed this year, maybe they pass them next year. Maybe they're obviously tax laws are going to be changing mm-hmm. as we go forward why it's so important if you're if you've got money in retirement accounts that have not had the taxes paid on that you're not just getting financial advice and paying that from an advisor but you're also working with a team under one roof that can help you address the many facets to this plan because this gentleman that came to me this week he he asked about so their name he asked where he was trading his money at mm-hmm. is this going to cost him any more than he was aware of and he triggered Irma and it did cost him more for his Medicare premiums and if you've ever asked for tax advice out there from whoever has your money, typically the answer is they can't give it to you. Ask your tax professional. Well, like we talked about last week on the show, most people use online tax software mm-hmm. to do their taxes. And it's hard to get that kind of answer or planning from that tax software. Absolutely. You're absolutely right. And that's what's great about our team approach 
is that we can talk to both both sides of that at the same time. You know, I'm sure you're going to echo this, but uh, usually when we're in the conference room, I'll talk to the client about we're about ready to make this decision. And it's important to that we walk all the way around to know all the implications of those decisions. Echo. <laughs> so if you guys need help or want to have a conversation with us, feel free to reach out at 833-888-HOUR or that's 833-888-4687. We've got offices in the Kansas City metro area, Wichita area, and Topeka as well, or we'll take a consultation over the phone. But don't let this cost you money. Figure out what it's going to cost you before it costs you money because I can't tell you time and time again of all the horror stories I've heard of people out there that are working with these professionals fragmented. That's all the time we have this week. We'll see you next week. Views and opinions expressed in this program do not represent financial, medical, tax, or legal advice. Please consult with a competent professional to provide advice tailored to your needs and circumstances. Investment advisory services are offered through Foundations Investment Advisors, LLC, an SEC-registered investment advisor. 